Hey YouTube, I want to talk about a project that I put on the back burner a while ago, recently finished, then put on the back burner again before I could ever get to a video. So it's been about, I don't know, four months of this sitting in the corner waiting for me to find time for it. I built my own DIY version of a rig runner. I've seen another version on Thingiverse, but it looked pretty flimsy. I built it and I instantly didn't like it. My problems with it were that it wasn't physically robust. I couldn't flex this thing. I couldn't hold on to it and, you know, manhandle it. I couldn't bang on the thing without it feeling like it was about to fall apart and subsequently catch fire. Um, so I decided to build my own. What do I have? It's a box with one power pole input, a uh, voltage uh, indicator or a, a voltmeter, a automotive fuse uh, enclosure where Again, because of demo syndrome and I'm on video, I can't actually get this open, but you can pull this open to replace the fuses. And six individual circuits that you can turn on or off. There's not a huge amount to demo for this video, so let's dive into how it was assembled. Uh, and for this video, I'm going to use my trusty Milwaukee power screwdriver and my hex bits, wherever those went. Oh, wherever those went was right next to me because I was thinking ahead. So, I designed this in two parts. You can see here there is a slight zigzag or jog in the cover. The idea behind this is that you can keep this cover always mounted and only open this cover when you need to service the output wiring. I designed it so you could have um, panels that are removed and admittedly I had a really old spool of PETG, so it gave me some problems during printing. Either way, there are two dovetail um, keystone panels here, not keystone panels, dovetail panels that kind of fit in that can be removed to change these out for other types of connectors if you want, or put something bigger in here like USB ports, for example. Um, let's just open this up. Put it on high speed. One of my um, caveats or conditions to building this was to make it durable and robust. I can grab onto this thing and flex it and manhandle it and okay, now that I've taken the front panel off, its physical rigidity is significantly reduced. Part of why it's so rigid is because of the uh, way it's constructed. On the inside, uh, you know what I'm going to put on the other camera. On the inside, you will see, if I turn up the aperture on this, you can see here there are these little plastic welded PEM inserts. These are these uh, heat welded brass inserts with an M3 thread, and they hold on for dear life. You will have a hard time stripping these hem inserts out as long as you don't completely over torque them. If you go to normal torque for an M3 fastener, you're fine. Uh, either way, going back to the construction of this itself, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just have a bunch of uh, rocker switches, um, a bunch of <laughs> spare wire. This is just like speaker wire I had laying around, 12 gauge, nothing fancy, and a bunch of power poles in the bottom. Um, but when you fasten the panel down and all the screws are acting to help hold the unit together, it uh, it's very strong. So that fulfills my main criteria for building one. Um, here it gets a little more janky. I wish I could have done a better job in the compact confines of this unit. Um, what I do have though is the voltmeter, which is independently fused, for better or for worse. Uh, it does take up a bit more space, and it's not really well laid out, and you have to open it to service it. But in theory, this voltmeter should never need replacing because, well, why would a voltmeter decide to blow a fuse, right? Um, and if you have to replace the fuse, then probably the voltmeter is toast anyways. So I've got this quasi-bus bar arrangement with this uh, automotive fuse holder, so you can just pull fuses out. And... Uh, this unit is actually fastened down uh, 
using VHB tape on the bottom side. So there's no fasteners or things to come loose. And I just noticed there is a loose wire inside here. <laughs> Piece of solder or something. Yeah, that's, that's a metallic thing inside there. That's not a good thing to leave behind. All right, so construction's again very simple. PEM insert nuts, beveled corners. Um, there's not a huge amount to it. Everything's just straight point to point wiring, but this fulfills the big cat a uh, big requirement for me, I should say, which is mechanical strength. I can uh, I can throw this in the back of uh, a car and not worry about it getting damaged. In terms of cost to build, it's more about the time required to build it um, rather than the cost. The cost of parts are pretty cheap. Um, trying to think of what else I can talk about on this while I'm also trying to reassemble the darn thing on the fly. All in all, it was a, a pretty straightforward project once I got the time to do this, but I figured I'd put it out there for anyone else who wants to follow in the footsteps. I do not think I will be making the files available, um, at least not for the foreseeable future, because there's still a few tweaks I want to make to this, um, namely just making this assembly a little bit easier, um, because it's so hard to get all the, uh, the wires tucked away inside the compartment. You pretty much have to use the screws to uh, help hold the panel shut. And for better or for worse, that's really a cumbersome arrangement. Because there's a risk of wires getting pinched. So, I think that is this video in a nutshell. I don't want to go on much longer about this. Um, I guess, like, subscribe, and comment. I normally don't say that anymore. <laughs> the algorithm decides all. Peace out.